discussed yesterday like uh, multiple inheritance so in java we have like single level multiple inheritance is allowed like in c++ we had something like something like multiple level multiple inheritance was there which is like if you have a class a right it can be inherited from inherited to class b like to b and b can be inherited to c right so in the same way if you want you can inherit this a to maybe some d right or b to some other e right but so this is what we have something called single level multiple inheritance so which means one child or one class can have only one parent being extended we cannot have multiple uh, you know classes of multiple level of inheritance in java which is it is been restricted in java actually which is like if you have a if you have c uh, it cannot have two parents like you know it cannot have a and b as uh, two uh, parents in here which is allowed in uh, c plus plus you can have multiple uh, inheritance being allowed in c plus plus actually right but in case of interface you can implement any number of interfaces in a class right that's what like i was about to uh, explain you till uh, at this point like multiple level multiple implementation of inter interfaces are allowed actually right but it is not being allowed in inheritance right so let's check out the multiple inheritance over here which is <coughs> so we had a cls sam we have taken cls child one so let's create uh, two more childs over here which is class at n so in child one let's extend this with choice here is child directly okay. and here yeah let's remove this uh, we'll, we'll come to constructor later let's say we have this default constructor over here and we have default constructor over here uh, And child two, we have extends for child. See, child one. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we have uh, taken four classes where one class is a super class, and we have taken CLS child, which extends CLS Sam, child one with child, and child two with child one. Yeah. Now, in this case. In this case, every time, just remember that super. Whenever we use something called super, right? It is immediate super, immediate super. So let's take up that. So when I want to create, let's create the end class CLS child two obj is equal to new CLS child. Let's say. So let's No, obj dot i okay. when i say this i right so, oh, sorry. so i haven't written uh, anything in child 2 child 1 and child right i have direct, i'm you know uh, i'm directly taking something called i over here now what happens we have i which is a, which is a public or in a super super class right now here you can see that i i am able to access my i so in one of these classes if, when i declare some i right it will be overrated with that so let us check out that right so how it is being accessible now 
in this let me just uh, close these constructors and call some get some here which is sys of uh, dot get some right yeah. run this yeah you can see you know uh, the default things which is uh, anyways your default constructor will be called in here right let me just uh, comment this out as of now think that you don't have anything here let me go and run this yeah you can see 100 which is i and get some is 300 right so in between let us say in child one i'm defining int i is equal to public int i is equal to twin right now so in one of the classes which is you know in, in this hierarchy so we have created i over here so now, now what is this i this i again will take the nearest scope public integer i right which is we have defined i over here right and whenever we call get some it will it will check in each every class which is it will first go and check in child two no it is not there it has got a parent go here check here it is not there again go back to its parent which is this so it is not there it's, it will go to the you know uh, the old parent over here and yes I, uh, it found get some now when it call get some it has got something called i plus x so this i plus x is nothing but this class i plus x right so it will give you the sum of this so let me run this up and we have taken the child i as 20 you can see 20 and 300 right so this is how this access accessibility will be done actually so even if 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 you define the same variable here in child 2 right again it will go to the nearest uh, scope actually if you define i is equal to some 35 right and let us define the same i in child sales child which is public in some i is equal to some 95 where we have defined in child 95 child 1 20 and 35 here right we are creating the lowest child which is in this hierarchy the child 2 is the lowest child over here and let's turn this up and you can see 35 and to get some is 300 right so in this way it works now <coughs> now when you say something like so let me just have get some at this level which is uh let me just overwrite the same let me just copy this out and paste it right get sum of i get sum i'll take the get sum and i plus x so let's check out what exactly it is taking so my x over here he is not giving an error, error because it will take the x from this and here i i is here so let us run this out so what we should get is from child two it will pick i right and when we actually we are calling something called get sum it will go and check child two so there is no get sum it will go and child one it will check whether it is there or not yeah it is there right and we are we are saying i plus x so it uh, it already have got i over here it will take this i and x from its parent it will go here so there is no x here it will go again to the pair yes x is here 200 which means 200 plus 20 okay, let me run this yeah 220 and 35 these are widgets so let us check out what is super here when i say super dot i right super dot i so basically for every child right super is only one level of parent which means when i say super dot i it's this so let me just remove this one so okay. super dot i is actually child one now if i define i over here super dot i which means it will check the first immediate parent sales child if it is there it will pick up if it is not there again it has got a scope to check its parent again so which is in this hole if i don't define anything over here which means it will give an error which is if I don't define anything, it will give error because there is no x i over here. So that's why we'll just extend this. Right. 
and now super dot i is nothing but your CLS style if you define any variable if you if you have, if you have not defined it will go to its parent which is CLS sam project right you have got your i over here now when you say get some when you call get some again i plus x is nothing but your 100 plus 200 right so you can this and you can see 300 over here right? so that is how uh, your super gets called right and and again in the same way if you define your io here public int i is equal to some some 220 some or some 45 is equal to 45 right so now when you are calling something called super here which means it immediately take the immediate parent right which is Let's go back and say the sums up and you can see 245 which is your x is x is 200 and your i became 45 here right so that's how you got this so that is how we use something called super right being called from this class and even if you don't have any you know variables over here if you don't have any variable even here let us say right and now let me just define this get sum again over here child to here where so there is no get some so there is get some in childhood is i mean there is no i defined in uh, child one and even in child so let us see what happens here so we have just called one i and we just call get some of super daughter right in the last class if you run this up you'll see 300 because it will pick super from this class it is not available go back to parent not available go back to the parent and it has got some i now let me give you parent. so if if you get some if you, if in this whole hierarchy if it in design time itself we do if we don't have i right let me just uh, comment this out this i right there itself it will give you an error like you know if your super doesn't contain super in the sense actually the super is nothing but child 2 super is child 1 that's it the hierarchy ends there but if, when the search comes to child 1 the stack search will again move to child again move to this stack right so that's how the search is done now when you define it here so but this happens only if you are using some editors actually like if you are if you are developing something in normal notepad process or notepad and you are trying to generate class right then you will get a runtime error anyways right so that's how your editor supports the editor will have a complete oops you know uh, platform being embedded in this so that's why whenever you create an inheritance it will directly give you uh, an error right so now let's let's check out uh, with constructors now right which is let me just say in child one i gave child one here Right. So oops, CLS child one, right? And we just took a default constructor here. Now let me just say in a here. So when you say this, it, the whole tree will be disturbed again, right? Because so it should uh, it should get so inside this, you know, it is it is having a default constructor. So JVM will keep a default constructor here and it will call something called super. Super is nothing but child one. But in child one everything got disturbed, right? So you have a you have redefined the constructor, which means your JVM will not place any of the default constructor over here, which means you are not calling some constructor called CLS child. Right? So that's how what you have to do in order to make sure that you are calling a uh, uh, child over here or constructor over here which has got super again right so now why it is giving an error is so child one constructor is never been called which is not allowed here so that's how you just create child two constructor over here and just say cls child super if you say just super right it will give you only one option which is this in a let me just say some five right now it is allowed which is yes so let me just take 
int a comma int b right and let's just in child one let's take one constructor which is in child which is cls child over here and uh, let's say this is some something okay. so let's disturb the whole tree right and yeah so now you can see that you know it, it can have super you can see there is only one super because the super of this class is only child one and not this child right so that's how we get only super for this right so when you mention super of two numbers right let me just give you 10 comma 15 and in this child we give some again super of so it has got only one uh, call here which is uh, super which is one integer over here which is it accepts only one that will just extend it to two again in b right so it will give you two integers now which is int a and int b right let me just pass a comma b now right a comma b now. and again in child so we have got this so let us call super so why we are not getting any error here is because we already have something called uh, default constructor here right let's just break it up and you can see again a child got disturbed again right so let us say super of again uh, yeah a comma b right? where you have you have got uh, in this super you have got both the constructor which accepts one integer and two integers which is this so i've got two constructors here which is which accepts one in one argument of integer type and one of the other constructor which is two right so let's take up uh, two argument types here which is cls child we have defined again here defined again here now let's break it up again let's say i want to get details from user int a and int b right and super of a comma b yeah so let's take it out all the other methods which is cls child i don't have get sums anywhere here so now let's go back here you can see that there is an error here because we have to provide two number side let's provide something like 25 comma 775 here right. and let us check what is i over here now and uh, x i comma x right. let's run this. you can see 25 75 and 100 so in this whole hierarchy of your tree right we are defining your variables from your lowest possible child right and what you are doing is you are getting a sum of it and let us write get sum over here now in some class which is in between the tree which is let's just copy this get sum and yeah let us keep it here now wh what does it make a difference inside this method again what you are doing is let us say just this out of let us just say i mean child one right so that just to make a make you show difference whether it is being called from the parent or the one of the child right but we'll say uh, i comma x here right let's go back and then you can see i'm in child one and 100 right because again in child one it is getting i and x from here which is i and x from here but what we have done from here we are controlling the value of your i and x right so this is how you get your i and x here right so in the same way if you define the same thing in any other level right so in child one let us say i have some int i is equal to some again 250 again it will break your it will break your uh, uh, chain again right which is here get some will take this i right will take we consider this i let us see let me just take it as public We'll see 225 because 75 and your value of i so if you want to make sure it's a it's a super class again just make it a super right so now this won't affect your 
uh, local variables like i or any variable which is defined in her get sum right let's run this again we get the same value 100 because we have sent 25 and 75 right so this will be retained in the same way so this is how we have uh, something which is you know uh, multiple inheritance just check whether we can extend one more let me just say comma say let's try see it will it will it will never allow it won't even give uh, you know uh, the multiple phase of uh, this right it won't allow it so these are we get something called multiple uh, I have a quick question we are on yeah uh, so so let's imagine if you have um, a variable I defined in every class Mm -hmm. um, and let's say that you're in class child 2 and you want to reference the variable in class child. Um, do you have to explicitly call the class child class to access variable i, like in, in your return statement? No, uh, Ron, like, how could you do that? Ron, your voice is not clear, Ron. It's uh, breaking up. Can, can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. Please go on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is Ron. Can you mm. hear me? Yeah, Ron. Yeah, Ron. Go on, go on. Uh, okay. So if you have if you have variable i in all of the classes, and you're in class child two, and you want to access only the variable value in class child, how can you explicitly call upon that um, that variable? Do you have to explicitly state class child dot variable i? Yeah. Uh, okay. So you mean. Uh so this int i is there in child child 1 and child 2 but you want to call explicitly the child cls child's i right yes yeah, yeah then correct yeah. so 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 yeah so using what you want to call this i i mean using the child 2 you want to call this i or child 1 or cls child so what exactly you mean right so here so, uh, so I, I, yeah mm -hmm. in child 2 i want to call uh, the the variable in class child okay so from here yeah so for that you have to you know get your scope so let us say int i is here public int i is here which is a 95 right and okay let's say variable is here yeah it's already there and yeah it's deeper right which is a so now so what uh, Ron's question is so how can I access only CLS childs in child 2 am I right Ron or or outside world that's correct yes. yeah that's so correct. Let, us, let us just check where how to access this one in child 2 so first thing is so without actually bypassing child 1 you will never be able to access child right so you have to write some bypassing you know a, a method or something in here to get your uh, child child i into child 2 let's check out that so let me just write you can have to write something called public in right uh, get parents i let me just say parents i right and here just say return super dot i right public and, right. and now go back here let's say here I want public void uh, print super i let's say and just say sys out of let's say super dot so get the oops get parents i so now what we have done is so here uh, let me just uh, take it as i so this i this local i i want the value of this i in here let us say right so just say i is equal to super dot get parents i and let me just print this i over here right so what we have done is we have bypassed something or we have created a loop where in this child what i'm saying is i have written something called get parents i which is i'm returning super dot i now super dot i is in the census it is this i now right so now 
In CLS child, we have created something called print super i, which means here we have got an i, a variable of variable i, which is in two level parent, two level above parent, right? So let's call this parent i here. So is it printing? Just say obj dot print super i, right? So now in child 2 we are trying to access an i of CLS. So we should get 105. Run this up and you should get 102. Right? Which means run here your question was valid and for this you have to create a direct you know a loop over here. Because in child 2 you cannot have super dot super dot like you uh, I mean you cannot go to the level one step above level actually. You cannot have something called super dot you know super actually you cannot have that because if you know that you know child 2 super is child 1 and its super is child right you cannot go in in that way directly but you have to get some loop loop line or some you know uh, passage where you can access something called child's properties into this right where what we have done is we have created something like this right so these are we actually create uh, this thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Or or what you can do is uh, you can also do this. Let us say I'll pass this child object here, which is super. Uh, I'm sorry. Which is uh, let me say new CLS child. Okay. Where we have something called. Some default constructor here in this. Okay, let me just pass some 100 and 200 here. Which means you are actually passing the complete object of your CLS child where you can access each and everything in here, right? Mm -hmm. Which is get parents uh, I we have taken and we are passing the complete object here. And here again, let's say handle, handle object something and just say. Uh, you can call CLS child CLS child yeah and obj is equal to super dot just say get parent side which means we will get the complete uh, hold of this now right and let's say here you can see obj dot you can access anything so here in this child let's say i is there and one function is there which is public void uh, just say I am child hierarchy some which we have right. this is out of I am child 1 right so I am child 1 here and again in child so we have created loop line just say I am child 2 returning child's object right and it again came to this child too and what we are doing is we are just saying <coughs> let's say child 2 here handling child which is whenever I say child keep this this is a child and this is I'm in parent child let us just say child here let's go back here just say child 1 because the name of class is child 1 again go back here and just say child 2 handling child and obj dot you have so what is the method we have created I am child hierarchy just create it here I am child hierarchy so when you run this up oops Here you have in child 2, you have something called which is catch parents i. Yeah, it is sorry, handle object, handle object. Huh? So let's see what happens here. Let's, let me just uh, comment those things for some time. You can see. It came first child and it returned an object 
and again it returns something called handle and in this handle in this handling right in this handle object i am in child 2 and did something again it is calling this again internally what it is calling is it is creating a get parent i super dot i and so in this method we are saying i am child 1 returning child object right i am child 1 returning object so inside inside this we are creating an object of this so this is how you can access them right so here you can access any anything you want right anything you want which is obj dot i obj dot i here right so which will actually call child's object because we are, we are directly taking child's object from some loophole right so this is how you can create some you know uh, pathway in between your hierarchical uh, inherited classes fine so any more doubts so is it clear Ron yes it is thank you yeah, cool so any more doubts guys here like in this complete hierarchy of inheritance any more doubts over here yeah no okay so if it is clear then uh, let's move on so so these are how we actually create you know play with the constructors and how so if you understand one level of inheritance right it will be completely you know applied to multiple level but only keep in mind that super is something which is a immediate parent that's it so there is nothing called super dot super where you can actually call your parents parent right so if you want to call parents parent you have to create some loop way to pa to reach that parent right or or uh, I'm, I'm just talking about let us say if child one is there you want to actually access cls sam's sam's variables and methods right then you have to create some bypass here right? we know that if you create a direct object of clsm you can you can do whatever you want to access but that is not inheritance right inheritance is something which if you are, if you are using some child and accessing the parents uh, variables and objects uh, variables and methods right so that is where you are actually you know trying to trying to do something called inheritance right so that is possible only with some uh, something which is bypassing uh, code over there right so that is your uh, inheritance like complete in inheritance we have in uh, java and so you can see that here inheritance is something which you it, it all works on the logic which you write actually right and as your java supports complete object oriented language it is completely possible to i know write complete inheritance over here right yeah so if if this is clear let's move on with uh, next stuff which is uh, which is polymorphism now polymorphism again as i said its method overloading and overriding is nothing but a polymorphism because polymorphism is you know uh, something which is uh, written once and you can you can you can use the same method to you know outsource or give it to client and just say use one method and do whatever you want in multiple ways right so that is a polymorphism which is one which is poly we say it has uh, multiple morphs morphs forms multiple forms or one entity having different forms and in java what can have different forms is your methods right so where you can actually write a same method in different ways so in writing the methods you can have two things one either you can overload a method or something which you can override a method right so this is how you uh, actually uh, do uh, the polymorphism so right so that is what uh, we have in here which is uh, uh, you know the oops concepts right so now to just give a touch up over here let me just give you a last touch up let us just close all and let me create two classes here which is uh, CLS uh, let me check it as uh, yeah let me take the shape here right so here uh, let us say I will just try public uh, avoid some method here uh, which is uh, yeah just say print line something print line here and in this let us say I have uh, sys out of I'm parent right and uh, let me take uh, CLS class C 
CLS rectangle something okay so here what we'll take we'll check it as am shape right just say this is a shape class and let us say let's extend this to CLS shape here and <coughs> Yeah, uh, just say the same method is here, which is I'm just overriding this method, which is copy this up and paste it here. Yeah, and yeah, let's go back to uh, our usage directly. Yeah, you can use this or let me create some other sort of serious usage one. So here you have a main here, right? Now, <coughs> now, so we have some possibilities here, which is like first case here is let us just create a shapes object, which is CLS shape OBJ is equal to new CLS shape, right? Which is a straightforward first case. So here, when I say OBJ dot print line, right? When I say OBJ dot print line, let's keep it at end. You will see some cases here, right? So when I say when I create an object of shape, which is when I am creating a object of one class, which is not related to anything, related in the sense it is not extending or implementing anything, which means I am calling a direct class, right? So here what I am doing is I am just creating an object of that, and I am just calling a simple method bin defined. So when I call this, so it will say just whatever is being written. Now this is the first case. Or second case. Second case is what I'll do. If the class is related to some other class, which is CLS shape, OBJ is equal to new CLS rectangle. Can I do this? Right. So what I'm doing in here is, uh, I'm just taking a variable of shape, which is OBJ, and I'm assigning an object of some other class, which is rectangle. So why it is allowing here is here rectangle is nothing but a child of your main class called shape. Now here what is happening is a child is being carried over by your parent, which is which is uh, a legal case here, which means a parent can always hold a child's object. Now when I say OBJ is a print line again, so here what we are doing is we are creating a variable of shape and and holding an instance of rectangle let me run this you can see i am oh, i'm sorry here we have to write rectangle. we just copy paste it and run this you can see i am rectangle right so why it is going to i am rectangle is even if you are creating a variable of your any class and you are taking up the child's instance right in heap this stack will be created as an copied memory so when this tag is created as an copied memory and when we just say obj or print line which means we are so this will search this classes print line which is here and it will take up your amulet line right now in the same situation let us say let us say this method is not here which is i'm just commenting i'm just commenting up here right now serious rectangle don't have this so let's go back and see whether it is possible and what we did is we just did serious shape and we just gave the instance of this let me run this you can see the parents method will be called because it is not there in here obviously if it is not there in here basically serious rectangle will go and search in serious shape right it will go and search it is, it is here now there is one more case here let us say I don't have that method here, which is CLS print line. Can you see here? It won't allow because your CLS rectangle. This method is this method belongs to only CLS rectangle, and it can never be accessible from your CLS shape, right? Which is a variable and also a parent of your class CLS rectangle. So that's how. Which means you can, if you are, if you are trying to hold a parent's object and give the child's instance, right? And if you want to access any method, it should be defined in your parent class. 
if it is not defined it won't allow it to access at least define something called some declaration you don't have to give anything just declare it in your parent class and whatever you want to do just do it in child right just do it in child over here which is so i'm not i'm not done anything here we override it in your child and just create this now it will allow right it will allow it and you can say i'm not done fine so that is how uh, it works so let us take uh, some variable here which is uh, public uh, int i uh, i is equal to 10 here by right? and the same i in here first <coughs> right so let me run this uh, just say sys out of the obj dot i let me just fight take it i right. when i run this you can see 10 here. why why we can see oh let me just say it as 95 here and run this up you can see 95 because this 95 is nothing but this class 95 even if you don't have a variable here let us say you don't have i here it will allow because <coughs> when you are calling this instance object right which is CLS rectangle if you don't have a variable it have a loophole where you can, it can go to parent and it has got this so even then it will give you the same one right now let me just remove this and just say this uh, sorry. again right so you don't have any variable here uh, now let's go back to usage you can see that yeah it is not allowed because i cannot be resolved or not a few because all the private or or personal variables or methods of your rectangle class or a child class can never be accessible from a variable of your parent right you should have at least a declaration or something where you can actually go and use them right so that is how your parent and child classes uh, play now let's go back and see one more case which is let us say cls rectangle which is a straight case again is equal to new cls rectangle right so when you write this right where you are uh, yeah uh, rectangle here yeah now what you are doing is you are directly accessing something called class which is CLS at time here let us say we don't have anything in here right and we have some public i here right you can see even if you don't have anything with the creation of your cla class rectangle or a child class rectangle you will be able to access everything either from this rectangle class or from your parent class or from above classes right let me run this you can see 95 and in this print line, I've just uh, deleted this. Just say this out. <coughs> I'm shape here. Right. And this one is up. You can see I'm shaping it here. Right? Which is again this. And if you have some personal methods here, you can also call them. Which is, uh, let's say, uh, this print line and just say this has. Uh, just method one, some some MET one, right? And just say um personal method of some time right? You can also call this using yeah this which is obj dot m met one. Yeah. You can call using this. After run this, and you can see I'm rectangle method of I'm personal method of rectangle rectangle and tip. Okay. So these are we can access all these things from your child object. Anyways, we have seen all the all this case, right? And now next case, the last last case which is you know very important and uh, CLS rectangle OBJ is equal to new CLS shape. Can you do this? So here what I am trying to do is I am trying to hold an instance of your class some class into some other class but it direct, it immediately found that this class is a parent of this which will never be able to do this right because a child can never hold a parent's object so this case is completely illegal so which means it, it will it will never try to hold this right which is this case is not possible. 
you cannot do this which is uh, in, in real time obviously right, you have to keep uh, these things in track because sometimes you will be getting you know uh, these things and if, if you mess up with these right like uh, as of now what we are doing is we are extending this shape right let us say at, at any time if you want to change this right if you want to change this and you have created some bigger class where you are doing some, you are something else right you have to make sure to write whatever is there in here and change your declaration part that is fine but only thing is you should not disturb this tree right which is by creating all these other things so this is what uh, we have and so here you can see that you know you can do all these things only in between child and parent and you cannot do across so let us say I have a CLS shape which is a CLS shape class OBJ is equal to I cannot call something called CLS child which is some other class or CLS SAM right I mean CLS SAM class which is in the same package of 5 5 something and you cannot do this because this class is nowhere related to this right so if you, have, you don't have any relation to this right you cannot have a same this instance of class into some other class right so it is possible only in between two uh, parent and child hierarchy classes or or all the inherited level classes right in the same way you can have any number of inheritance let us say you have four inherited classes over here right let's go to usage here and see CLS child 2 you can also say like in, in instead of CLS child 2 just give CLS uh, SAM CLS SAM right it is possible it is possible but only thing is you have to give all the methods of child 2 in your this that's it that's the only thing but CLS SAM can hold any any child subject it can have child 2 right it can hold something called CLS you can see here see it can hold all the methods which is CLS SAM yeah CLS SAM again CLS child CLS child 1 you can give CLS child 1 again 34 and 45 yeah it's possible to hold up but only thing is when, when you want to access something from CLS child it should also be there in CLS child that's the only restriction right but it, it can hold any sub child's uh, object here right in the same way in between these two right like uh, if, it, if you have child child 1 child 2 right here a child can access or can hold which is like uh, CLS child child can hold an object of OBJ let us say is equal to new it can hold an object of uh, CLS child that is being only one ok we have written so many constructors here CLS child 1 CLS child 1 so here what does it say CLS child 1 and constructor is undefined which is child 1 I've got 2 numbers which is 2 comma 3 let's say right and just end up yeah so your child can hold child 1 or child 2 because child child is a parent of child 1 and child 2 in the same way child 1 can handle child 2 right in this way uh, this this holds good for you know any any level of inheritance where your parent can hold your child and if you want to uh, hold your child with your parent and if you want to access some attributes or way or methods of your ch child class it should also be there in your uh, parent right so that is what we have uh, in complete oops in java right i hope you uh, so guys you have any doubts in this uh, object creations of different uh, parent classes here or child any doubt any case that you got in your mind to uh, make it clear yeah no no everything okay fine so uh, if everything is clear now so that is what we have a complete oops uh, in java which is uh, abstraction interface encapsulation inheritance and your polymorphism right and your polymorphism is straightforward when you understand here because we just got through uh, overloading and overriding in inner inheritance itself because so this overloading and overriding things can happen only 
uh, in some classes which is uh, child parent classes right and overloading can be done only in a same class right so that's how uh, we have this uh, oops concept so uh, now we are done with oops right if you have uh, any doubt in any part of oops just you can just ask me now so that we can clear out now itself guys anyone prakriti uh, shiva right ron <coughs> purushottam vamshi surender right you can just uh, clear out right uh, if you have any uh, it's if it is clear just uh, we can just move on to uh, now let's move on to exception handling right and we'll see what uh, we can do in there right so if it is clear let's move on and let's uh, meet up tomorrow just uh, start exception handling right and we'll take up from tomorrow fine guys cool thank you yeah okay yeah. fine then uh, i'll see you up tomorrow at the same time right and we'll start, we'll start with a new topic tomorrow okay Okay. Okay. Uh, Have a great day. Thank you. Yeah. Good night, bye. guys. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.